Good morning and welcome back. Um, this is four months since we last did this because we were four months out of lockdown. But me and Molly, and let me just turn around and we'll say hello to Molly. Here's Molly and with a rather spectacular look at the kind of like there. So we've got, um, I don't know what you call it, a scrunchie with. Um, Scrunchy, scrunchy with antlers on, and we've got a Merry Christmas Minnie Mouse top on, top on. Because what we thought we would do, um, what we enjoyed doing, anyone that kind of um, remembers what we did back in the first lockdown, um, we read stories at the weekend, um, which we loved doing, um, and um, a few people enjoyed what we were doing as well. So we, what we thought we would do, as it's lockdown two. Um, we thought we would bring back some stories and now one of the things that we kind of have a lot of as well as lots of um, children's stories generally we have lots of Christmas stories as well and I unashamedly love Christmas and I, there'll, there'll be a lot of people that say oh it's too early to be having Christmas yet you can't put Christmas lights up but heck everything else has gone pooey this year so we thought we would have start a bit of Christmas early so we've got ourselves we've got ourselves some hot chocolate here we've got and... ourselves a squishy penguin we've got some Christmas lights up yeah we've got some hot chocolate and yeah. all the lights around and we've we've started to kind of bedeck the yeah, kind of like the blankets around with Christmas blankets so for Saturdays and Sundays uh, for the rest of lockdown we're going to have, uh, we're going to service all your Christmas story needs. So we had a nice little kind of session this morning of sorting out loads of Christmas stories for all the weeks upcoming. And we've worked out, um, so pretty much four books, it's kind of like four four books a day, isn't it? So we're doing four books today and four books tomorrow. Um, and then we'll be back next weekend and the weekend after that and whatever. So we've got, let's have a look at the books that we've got today. We have got, um, there's been a series of Aliens Love, um, Aliens Love books and we're doing Aliens Love Panta Claus today. So as I say, we're doing, it's all the fiscal Father Christmas he wants. We're having the seminal Father Christmas Needs We, brilliant book by Nicholas Allen. Nicholas Allen has done some wonderful books. Um, Jesus's Christmas party was a particularly particularly good one. Um, the Mermaid's Christmas Adventure, Michael Foreman. So this this is one we um, we've got a caravan down in Devon, and this is a, a Michael Foreman is a um, a writer from uh, from down in Devon. So we've got the Mermaid's Christmas Adventure. I'm very excited about this one. Um, this is the third Christmas book that this that this kind of combination of people have uh, have done. Um, this one came out this week, actually, this, this Thursday, just gone. Um, so it's very, very new. Uh, Richard Curtis is the, is the guy behind lots of wonderful films, uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral, and the seminal Christmas classic, Love Actually. Uh, and Rebecca Cobb, we love Rebecca Cobb's books. Um, Paper Dolls is probably our favourite mm -hmm. of Rebecca Cobb's. Um, but as, as a combo, these two have done, uh, this is, as I say, their third Christmas book. And in the coming weeks, we will have the other two. But the other, the other two are even more Christmassy, so we'll save those. So, I reckon, what do you reckon, what do you reckon? What's, what's our order then, Mom? Um, let's do, let's just do the order that they're in, so maybe... Um, aliens so we'll start Panta with Claus. we'll start with the way I said them, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aliens, Father Christmas needs we, Mermaid's Christmas Adventure, and then we'll finish off with that Christmas. Cool. Right, do we need a slurp of hot chocolate before we get going? Okay. Uh, I don't know whether it's a hot. I can't remember. I made it about ten minutes ago. Oh, let me show 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 everybody your mug. It's well cool. We got an owl mug. <laughs> and a, and a, it's a very pink hot chocolate, isn't it? Yeah. Very pink hot chocolate. What was it, Raz? Uh, white, berry. Berry. white berry. White berry. White berry. Cool. So the first one we've got is Aliens Love Panta Claus. What we'll what we'll do over the kind of like the coming weeks, we'll make this even more Christmassy because it's it's quite daylighty here, so you can't see see all the Christmas lights. And maybe we'll film it later in the day when it's a little bit darker. And, um, so Aliens Love Panta Claus. 
Lots of pants. This book is all about pants. <laughs> the aliens are excited as tomorrow's Christmas Day. So instead of stealing underpants, they're giving them away. They jump up into their spaceships, wee and whiz off to Lapland, full of the Christmas spirit to give Santa Claus a hand. The aliens read the letters out from all the girls and boys, and just for fun, they add a pair of pants in with their toys. Do you want a good mind your pants with you? Oh, you probably do get the odd pair of pants for Christmas, don't you? But that's for generally from us, not for Father Christmas. In Santa's busy workshop, they cause a lot of snickers when dressing up the little elves in fancy frilly knickers. The reindeer wear their underpants lit up all bright and glowing with neon pants to light the way. It helps show where they're going. Great, Santa's nearly ready, but shh, when he turns his back, the aliens swap a spotted pair of bloomers for his sack. Means Father Christmas is going to end up in spotty bloomers. Ho, 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 laughs Santa, but his smile turns to a frown. He won't be going anywhere. His sleigh is broken down. It's aliens to the rescue with their spaceship for a sleigh. So reindeer bells are jingling. Here comes Panther Claus. Hooray! Oh, different way. They hover over rooftops and it really is fantastic how Santa shoots down chimneys on a rope of pants elastic. That's a cool picture. Yeah. The aliens follow Santa as he tiptoes to each bed. They take down all the stockings and tie knickers up instead. Do you think that would catch on? That'd be weird for the people who wake up. <laughs> Everybody puts their pants pants out to be filled over, over Christmas. They decorate our Christmas trees with festive knicker cheer and leave out underpants that say, an alien was here. An alien was here. Then, mission done, they fly back home to plan their next attack. So hold on to your underpants, the aliens will be back. And there's lots of alien underpants. Uh, you, you've, always, you've always got a favourite when you look at these sort of things, so pick out um, your favourite. I like that flower one. Yeah. I think I'd be, I'm, I'm super Christmassy, so I think I would be that one or that one. That one looks like it would be itchy. So <laughs> I think that, 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 one, that one for me, I think. <laughs> cool. Those are the same ones, aren't they? Right, okay, so that was Aliens Love Pantaclaws by Claire Friedman and Ben Court. Right, the next one. Very funny book. Very funny book. Uh, Father Christmas Needs a Wee by Nicholas Allen. And, yeah, he's he's written... So I think we read a couple of Nicholas Allen books when we, read, when we were reading books before. Yeah, we've got the um, whole pile. Of yes, no, exactly. I'm yeah. sure there's probably some Nicholas Allen ones in there uh, as well. Although, he's, like I say, he's done a fair few kind of Christmassy ones. So, Father Christmas Needs a Wee. Father Christmas needs a wee. He's been drinking drinks since half past three. At number one. One hot chock, yum. At number two, two plates of stew. At number three, three cups of tea. At number four, he'd had four more. Somebody filling up. At number five, five pops with pies. At number six, fruit mix, all six. At number seven, milk, seven, pure heaven. At number eight, eight cool milkshakes. Well, that alone, he's got, he's got a lot of milk. <laughs> At number nine, nine lemons and limes. At number 10, 10 teas, and then I think that you will clearly see why Father Christmas needs a wee. But oh, what with all those drinks in mind, he forgot to leave the presents behind. And so, so he still can't go for a wee. At number 10, he left 10 pens. At number 9, 9 nursery rhymes. At number 8, 8 pairs of skates. Why would, he, why would he want to eat skates? 
Well, this is true. Yeah, none of that works, really, is it? At number seven, sweets. Seven. More heaven. She obviously couldn't think of anything to rhyme. Seven. Yeah. At number six, six colourful bricks. At number five, five toys to drive. At number four, four beasts that roar. At number three, three Christmas trees. At number two, two cows that... What's that going to be? Two cows that... At number one, one pup that runs. See him run. Woof, woof. And so, at last, his work is done. And now it's time for him to flee, for Father Christmas needs a wee. Through the town, across the sky, the sledge it rises, rises high. Above the clouds and over the sea, he must be quick. He needs his wee. Quite hard to see that writing, isn't it? It's kind of like it's um, dark on dark. At last he's back, at home, all safe. Just look at that smile upon his face. He feels in his pocket, but where's the key? For Carother Christmas needs a wee. An elf with a gift appears by the door. I found this key just here on the floor. He thanks the elf and turns the lock. He runs up the stairs right up to the top and there is the loo. He shuts the door. Oh, happy Christmas, we hear him roar. <laughs> Having his much needed wee. Is it the same for, is it the same for girls? I know it's such a relief when kind of like when daddy's been driving and suddenly needs to kind of like <gasps> it's it's such a relief when you've kind of like had a wee when you have long needed a wee. <laughs> right. The mermaid's Christmas adventure. Was that we did we get it signed? No, that's actually a proper signature. Yeah. Yeah. Right, by Michael Foreman. As I say, he's somebody from Devon, I think. The old man sat on the rocks, enjoying the last warm rays of the setting sun. He was supposed to be fishing, but he didn't really care whether he caught a fish or not. He just loved listening to the sounds of the sea and dreaming of the wonderful creatures that lived beneath the surface. But all that changed as the fishing rod suddenly twitched in his hand. As the rod bent, the old man had to hold on with both hands. Ho, 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 he cried. This'll be a big one. Sounds like Father Christmas. <laughs> so I'm presuming he's going to be Father Christmas, so I was going to... It was certainly big, but it wasn't a fish at all. A little mermaid soared into the sky, her tail tangled in the old man's fishing line. She looks quite happy about it, though. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry, he called out to her as she splashed back into the sea. Please let me help you. He gently guided her up onto the rock and together they began to untangle the fishing line from her tail. Um, I've been around the world many times, but I've never met a mermaid before. What's your name? Moreoven. Is it? Is it? More, how would you pronounce that? More, Moreoveren. Moreoveren. Yeah, Moreoveren. She said, it means sea maiden. What's your name? Asked Moreoveren. And why do you travel around the world so much? Don't know what voice you'd give to a mermaid. What voice would you give to a mermaid? Don't know. Mm -hmm. Just I'd have to go with that, yeah. Ah, that's a long story, said the old man kindly. But I'm very pleased to meet you. Well, that's your tail free, moreover, and how does it feel? The little mermaid answered with a flick of her tail. She pointed out towards a rocky island. That's where I live, over there on Seal Island. We have a beautiful underwater cave and every day I swim with my seal friends. He smiled and said, This is the last day of my holiday and tomorrow I return to my home in the far north. But I'll be back before long and I hope to see you again. I hope so, said Moreoveran, as she dived away underneath the water. Back on Seal Island, she told her mer parents all about the strange encounter. Goodness, I hope your tail is all right. Did the old man have a white beard? Her mother asked. Yes, a very long white beard, like wise old Neptune, said Moreoveran. I think I know who he is, said Mermother, and I have a feeling it won't be too long before he returns. As the weeks went by, the weather grew cold and the sea was often stormy. 
It didn't matter to the Murr family, who still loved to sit together on their rock and watch the sun set and the moon rise. One beautiful moonlit evening, they heard an unusual sound. It seemed to be coming from the twinkling stars. As they watched, a strange flying boat appeared in front of their eyes. It was being pulled across the sky by creatures moreover and had never seen before. It seemed as if they had seaweed growing out of their heads, and the sound was not coming from the stars at all. It was coming from the seaweed. The flying boat swooped down and landed on the rocky island. Ho, 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 said the old man with the long white beard. Moreover, and recognised him immediately. I knew it, said Mer Mother. It's Santa Claus. The Mer people had often heard stories of a time in deep winter when the land children were all given special presents. How would you like to come with me and the reindeer on a special mission tonight, moreover? And I have lots of presents to deliver and I could do with a helping hand. Look, there's a space for you here on my sleigh and a warm blanket for your shoulders. Moreover, and was so excited, but looked towards her mer parents, who smiled and nodded their approval. In a flash, moreover, and flicked, her, flicked herself up to sit by the new, her new friend, Santa Claus. We'll be back before sunrise. Hold tight, moreover, and here we go. Ho, ho, ho. Up and away, they flew in a flurry of tinkling bells and huffing and puffing reindeer. <coughs> <coughs> it's hard to do ho, ho, ho's. I might have to have a sliver of hot chocolate after this. Moreover, and the little mermaid from Seal Island was the first ever flying mermaid. They flew along the rocky coastline towards the nearest town. From the air, it looked like a fairyland. The harbour glittering with coloured lights and tinsel decorated Christmas trees. <laughs> The sleigh landed gently on top of a snowy roof. Moreover, and watched in amazement as Santa grabbed a sack and with a mischievous wink, disappeared down a chimney. A minute later, he popped back out again with an empty sack and a bunch of carrots for the reindeer. Now she knew what she had to do. At each stop, she handed Santa the next sack and while he was gone, she fed the reindeer. They were a great team together and stopped off at all the houses in the town and then zoomed off to the next town. They visited all the little farms and cottages along the way and moreover and was enchanted to see the many different homes where the land children lived. Santa was busy the whole night, disappearing down chimney after chimney, sometimes returning with delicious food for them, called mince pies and more carrots for the two reindeer. Oh, there was only two reindeer. I haven't spotted the fact there's only two reindeer. What happened to all the others? Yeah. Which one's Rudolph then? Uh, I don't think either of those are. I'm always confused about Rudolph because I'm not. Because oh, no, there's yeah. no red nose. Yeah. No, there's none no, of those are. What a strange night this is, thought moreover, and, and my best adventure. They flew to the very end of the land and then over the seas where the Mer people lived to the islands below. As first light dawned, moreover, and saw that below them was the harbour where she first met Santa Claus. Now she knew his name and the story of why he travelled the world so much. As the sleigh landed back on Seal Island, the Mer family and her seal friends were all gathered to greet them. Thank you, moreover, and for all your help, said Santa Claus. I don't have much time, but I'd like to give you something to remember our adventure. I have to admit I'm a bit puzzled as I've never chosen a present for a mermaid before. One of the reindeer shook his antlers and a little bell dropped at Santa's feet. Well done, my dear. That is exactly right. He picked up the little golden bell and presented it to moreover. With a final wave and a Merry Christmas to all, Santa Claus and the reindeer flew up and away into the ever brightening sky. See you next year, Santa, called moreover. See you next year. Ah, oh, that's a nice story. I like that one. Not sure I've ever read that one before. Mm. Right, I'm excited about this one. So, as I say, we, we love Rebecca Cobb's pictures anyway, but Richard Curtis is a bit of a genius. So we'll see what this is all about. I had a little skim through, so I think I've got a rough idea, but I think it's going to be really good.
<laughs> so, there we've got, I think, all of the characters that are going to be in this. Yeah. And it's called That Christmas. And there's an island that appears in this as well. Oh, I can't, I'm going to have a little slip of hot chocolate before we start, so uh, yeah. if you want to have a grab it around. On the east coast, there's a village, and in that village lived five families. And this is what we looked like. They look, they look just like, look kind of like the paper dolls family, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Our parents had all been friends for years, and all of us children had been friends basically since we were babies. In the winter, we spent every cold and wet day in each other's houses, and in the summer, we spent every sunny day on the beach. Every year, we always spent Christmas Day with each other in a big barn where we had quite a lot of fun. There were the presents, there was the lunch, turkey and all the trimmings, and there was the washing up. They didn't look quite so happy about that. They look happy about that bit, that bit, but not quite so happy about that bit. <laughs> there was the big walk, there was the visiting the neighbours, there was watching Christmas TV, and then we went to bed. Same thing every year, just as good as every year, but always the same. But then what happened? That Christmas happened. It was when we were nine. That's us, Scarlet and Spike. And for the rest of our lives, we will all never, ever forget it. This is why it happened. Two days before Christmas, all our parents went away because some friends were getting married on an island nearby. And because Bernadette had just turned 16, they agreed that just for one night, we could all sleep together without a babysitter and they'd get back on Christmas Eve. But the next day, just as our parents were about to leave the island, a terrible storm broke out and the boat that was gonna bring them back simply couldn't sail because the people in it would have been tossed into the sea and died. So suddenly, there were no grown-ups left to take care of us on Christmas Day. Our parents managed to contact us and they gave us a huge list of exactly what we should do for every minute of Christmas Day. And we all promised we would do everything exactly as they said. We're all used to Zoom calls and Teams calls, aren't we? But what they didn't realise was... We all had our fingers crossed. Do you know what it means if you have your fingers crossed? It's mm. kind of like, yeah, it means you can tell a bit of a fib. So, so began what would forever after be called That Christmas. Because even though children absolutely love Christmas, it's a very important life lesson that everything can always be improved. So we made some little changes. Mm, let's see what changes they made. First, obviously, the presents. Everyone knows that adults are only quite good at presents because they always give presents they wish their children would play with, but children know they won't. So the older children peeked at all the presents on Christmas Eve and then swapped the presents that were a bit too serious for ones that were a bit more fun. Right there and then, Christmas was already 23% better. It's a funny figure, 23% better. <laughs> Next, we sorted out the lunch. Christmas food is all very well and awfully nice for parents to make the things that remind them of when they were young and Queen Victoria was queen, but everyone knows that they could do a lot better. That was gonna, that's, that's a bit cheeky. None of, none of us parents were around when Queen Victoria was around. That was quite a long time ago. So we chose good stuff and had the best Christmas lunch ever with lots of decent modern food and no Brussels sprouts. I'd find that sad. I like Brussels sprouts. Christmas improved by 26%. So the presents made it 23%. Now it's gone up by a further 26%. Us two also found an original way of doing the washing up, which was usually the worst part of Christmas Day. Instead, it was very nearly the best. So just piling them all up and then just hosing them down in the garden. I think they'd be very clean. And I think you might break a few. 
Next up, we all put our coats and hats and scarves and boots on for the big walk. We weren't going to miss that, although we did slightly change the route. Much, much shorter and 100% better. So they've gone out of the front door and straight round the corner into the back door. It's not really a big walk, that, is it? That's just going around the house. It's not even going around the house, it's going around a half of the house. We also didn't forget to visit the neighbours, though this year we did a lot more than just have a boring cup of tea with the remarkable Miss Timkins. Oh look, Miss Timkins is quite cool, look, she's got a, got a guitar right, got a hanky round her head and she's throwing some shapes and rocking out there. The next thing to sort out was watching Christmas TV. No speech by the Queen, no movie made in the last century in black and white, Nothing with anything to do with hymns or vicars or people being especially Christmassy nice to each other. A proper viewing schedule was worked out on lots and lots of different screens. Of course, improvement 17%. Oh, it's cranking up. Finally, we did get a bit tired. But then, just before the lights went out, Bernadette remembered something her granny told her a long time ago. She said, shh. And this was the last thing we heard that night. But let's not forget, in the middle of all the fun, and we all cheered because we had had lots of fun. Yes, indeed. But don't forget who started it. You see, Christmas is the actual birthday of this amazing baby. And when he was born, some completely amazing kings with actual big beards came and gave him completely amazing presents, including some actual gold. And the incredible thing is that this baby, who as far as I remember was born basically in a barn, grew up to be a really extraordinary person and he said really wonderful things like that. We should be kind to each other and love each other and not fight. And this really rings a bell with people all over the world, no matter where they live and what they believe in. And that's why we're all here to together tonight, because we actually love each other. And on Christmas Day, we really know it and show it. And then we all dozed off together in the barn. Then, first thing in the morning, something quite good happened. Our parents caught a really early boat and came home. And although they were rather surprised by the sight that met their eyes, they were really, really happy to see us. <laughs> And when they asked us how it had gone, we said it had been lovely and we'd done everything almost exactly the same. But of course, it hadn't been quite as good without them there. What they didn't see was that, once again, our fingers were just a little bit crossed. The next year, everything went back to normal and we were all as happy as cupcakes. But secretly, we knew we'd already had our best Christmas ever. So this Christmas, we strongly suggest that you ask if you can, maybe, just maybe, perhaps, please have well a little bit of that Christmas too. The end. I think that's a good reminder that you know, this Christmas is going to be a little bit weird because of all of the weirdness of this year. But it doesn't have to be. Lots of people thinking, oh, there isn't going to be a Christmas. But there definitely is. So that was our four books for today. We are back tomorrow. Let me spin it round. We are back tomorrow. Um, I can't remember. Can you remember any of the books of tomorrow? Um, the like Christmas bear. Oh, Christmas the, bear. Like, the, yes, that, that's like, the pull out. Yeah, pull out. Yeah, like pop yeah, up. Yeah, that was an Axel Shetler one. And uh, was it the Christmas show? Was that there tomorrow? Oh yeah, the Christmas the show. The Christmas show. That I like that one. I like that one. Cool. Wait. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, can't remember. Else. we got another two as well. Uh, I think they're a little bit shorter tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but we've worked out all of the ones for the coming weeks. So that's very, very exciting. And we've, tomorrow morning, we've got, we're going to the, up, up, up at the War Memorial to kind of like to do the schools, um, yeah. the schools poppy wreath. Um, we're doing that with Amelie and Isabel as well. Yeah, so that'd be nice. So we will be back tomorrow. Um, and da, 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 anything else to report? No, I don't think there is. So, in which case, give one of your little bye-bye waves. Bye.
and we'll see you tomorrow.